So, uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the last uh, session of this first series of the webinar Robot on Stage. And as you know, today we are focusing on the Robot Theatre project by playwright and theatrical director Irata Oriza and robotics engineer Ishiguro Hiroshi. A seminal and essential experience in the field of the possible relationship between robotics and theatre. Last time we talked about uh, Conte et Legende by Joël Pomerat, uh, a theatre play where in the near future androids played by young actresses are companions to a troubled human beings and are used to attenuate their solitude, the void of death, the violence of human relationships. And this is a common point with the creation we are focusing on today, in particular, Sayonara. Uh, but in this case, androids are real and play themselves on stage. So we thought that it was uh, important to come back to this creation of the last uh, decade with a particular attention to the interdisciplinary and experimental creative process. And we thank you uh, very much, our speakers who accepted our invitation today, uh, despite uh, uh, the time which will separate them from uh, their involvement in the robot theater project in the past, and despite their actual geographical distance. So we had a very uh, acrobatic uh, uh, organization for the time difference and time zone we have to deal with. Uh, so many, many thanks to come uh, with us uh, uh, today. Salvo. Uh, yes, today we will have uh, uh, Cinzia Toscano uh, from the uh, University of Bologna. Um, she she uh, is part of the group uh, uh, Performing Robots, and uh, she her studies focus, uh, she's a research fellow over there, and her studies focuses on um, uh, contemporary Japanese theater. And uh, recently, uh, I think in 2019, uh, if I'm correct, uh, she wrote uh, a book on uh, the works of Irata and Ishiguro, um, a book named The Robot Theater, uh, the mechanics of emotion, the robot human theater. Um, she will give us a, a, an introduction of uh, the works uh, uh, related to the robot human theater, and then we will have uh, our round table, our discussion uh, with, with Berlin Ong, the, the, she acted in uh, the Sayonara um, piece. And Takanobu uh, Chikaraishi, it's a researcher on Tokyo University of Arts. And there was the, actually the robot operator in, in, the, in the Sayonara, uh, the Sayonara um, theatrical piece. Uh, I don't want to steal more time, so I leave. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Also for, my, for me. Uh, um, I don't want to steal more time, so Cinzia, if you want to... Yeah, please. I share my PowerPoint. Uh, I use this just for have some images of different uh, performance. Can you see it? Mm. No? no? Okay. No. I try again. Fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so the um, Robot Human Theatre project could be said uh, that to bring on stage the um, imaginary of some European theatre director of the early uh, 20th century. Uh, such as Edward Gordon Gregg with the Uber Marionette or Metterlink with the Theatre uh, of Android. 
um, they see in, uh, in the marionette and uh, in the android uh, an aesthetics um, ideal to achieve. And this project start uh, in uh, 2000, 2008 by the collaboration uh, between uh, the theater director Irata Oriza and the, the robotics engineer Ishiguro Hiroshi. And uh, uh, in the context of the project uh, were produced five plays. And in, uh, in chronological order, uh, they, was, uh, they are um, I Worker in the Art of the Forest, Sayonara, Three, Sister and Three Sisters Android Version, and the Metamorphosis Android uh, Version. Um, I work on uh, all of these uh, performance, uh, in all these performance act uh, humanoid and android robots uh, to get together with uh, real actors. Uh, for example, in, uh, in iWorker, uh, iWorker presents the everyday life of, of a Japanese couple uh, who lives uh, with, um, with the two human robots that, they, that take care of the household. Um, in the art of the forest uh, is a setting uh, in a scientific laboratory that conducts research on uh, sympathy uh, cloning. And uh, uh, the two, um, two of the scientists of the, um, of the team are uh, two humanoids. We can say some imaging. I work, this is the Wakamaru robot, an humanoid uh, by Mitsubishi if I'm in the art of the forest. And uh, Sayonara, we talk about it uh, uh, later. And the sister android uh, version and the metamorphosis android version. So uh, the first, um, ah, the, the last two performances uh, are inspired by Three Sisters uh, uh, by Chekhov and uh, the Metamorphos uh, um, by um, Kafka. So Ishiguro and um, Irata uh, met at the University uh, of Osaka while Irata was a lecturer at the Center of the Study of Communication Design, and Ishiguro was, uh, um, hence, the, the department of, the robot, the, of robotics. And Ishiguro is the creator of the robot used in uh, these five plays, uh, written and directed by Hirata. Um, the shows are uh, different from each other concerning the, the teams. However, they share the vision of a future in which robots will live in close contact with humans. And except uh, the metamorphosis android version, all of our, our sect in the next future, uh, in a Japanese next future. In, the, in a context of Japanese uh, uh, culture. Um, according to Ishiguro, the human brain has the capacity to make us interact with different entities, but recognize in human being um, an interface with which we can communicate. And in order to facilitate human-machine interaction, he creates robots in appearance very close to the human being. As we can say in these uh, images, is the, uh, the twist robot of, uh, of Ish uh, Ishiguro. Um, Ishiguro, during his career, uh, has been working to develop the potential of the human-machine relationship by imagining a future society in which uh, robots can support humans in everyday life. And one of the most ambitious goals of the Ishiguro's team is to transfer the human presence 
or maybe better the simulation of the human uh, presence to this uh, to his in android in order uh, to uh, to do this uh, he uh, originates the android science uh, the android science uh, a field of study that involves uh, the collaboration of experts in uh, robot engineers, cognitive science, psychology, sociology, and artists. So for Ishiguro, the experimentation with the robot in theater are included in a more large context, in a multidisciplinary uh, ambient. So um, in Irata Theater, um, Ishiguro finds a perfect semi-private set to explore the potentiality of its robots. Indeed, Irata, Irata's theater is characterized by a realistic, uh, realist aesthetic, which in image, characters and dialogue are inspired by reality. He began uh, his theatra, theatra sorry, the theatrical work um, in the 80s and 1983 founded the um, Saint and the Theatre Compact that is still in activity. During the 90s, uh, he formalized his contemporary colloquial theatre about which Irata himself says, start quotation, in short, the uh, essence of contemporary colloquial theater we were doing was a movement to take the ideolo ideology dominated drama language that had, had, that had resulted from the direct importation of Western theater and recreate it from the stand, standpoint of language itself. End of the quotation. But in the context of the robot human theater, the most important quality uh, in the Hirata's place is the, essential, is the essentiality of, uh, of his scenario that still uh, is more able to accept elements not usually uh, associated with, uh, with the theater, like robot. Hirata does not use uh, these robots on stage uh, as elements able to exceed the potentialities of uh, human actors, but rather as part of the social and anthropological structures in which human has uh, organized uh, its social environment, like family uh, or friends group or the scholar, uh, the school environment. So Wakamaru, Geminoid and uh, Repli as one as a uh, part of, uh, of the um, uh, as a part of the Iratas dramaturgies in the same ways as the other characters to create an imaging of everyday life. Um, the teams, the uh, teams that recur most frequently in his plays are linked to the ex uh, existential sphere and include topics such as the split apart of human relations or the difficulty to living in a life in social convention. So uh, among the, um, the five plays of the project, uh, of the project, Sayonara is my favorite one, and uh, not, not just because Briley or Chika, Chikaraishi are here today, but because it more than uh, other plays is able to emotionally involve and surprise the spectator uh, at the same time. For, for, from this performance, uh, the project takes on a new name, from robot to human theater to android human theater, to underline the use of an android and not just a humanoid robot. In Sayonara, Bradley perform a lonely young woman in her 30s, and uh, has spent most of his life uh, in uh, loneliness, 
and keeping her company is um, Geminoid Def, an android with the long black hair and a kind face. So in conclusion, I think that Robot 2 Human Theater is one of the most complex, uh, complex projects in the field of the experimentation between theater and robots. And uh, uh, it's sure he is able to inspire new collaboration and uh, next project. So thank you. This was a, a brief uh, um, presentation of the, of the robot to man theater. Okay, thank you. I don't know if uh, there are some questions directed to Cinzia about his introduction. Uh, from from the public, otherwise we can just uh, go into the into the round table. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, Isabella. Yes. Yes, maybe just a short question. Thank you, Cynthia. It was uh, really interesting. Um, my question is. Uh, uh, have you found uh, any information uh, about the creation process uh, of uh, Oriza Hirata? Oh, yes. Um, in, um, in the dramaturgy, uh, in, the, in the creation of the dramaturgy uh, of Sayonara and um, I work or um, in uh, the art of the forest. So the, the place that have um, original dramaturgy by Rata. And uh, the construction of the dramaturgy is based on uh, the colloquial, contemporary colloquial uh, uh, theory. So he um, bring uh, on on uh, on scene um, everyday life. So um, and, and uh, the rhythmics. Uh, inside the text uh, is uh, one of the most important uh, elements uh, because the rhythm uh, to say the line or to accord uh, the body um, movement uh, uh, is very uh, important part uh, for uh, Irata, um, Irata work. Maybe, maybe Briley can uh, can speak about this better than me but uh, uh, the text of uh, irata are um, thinking uh, like uh, um, a music test so the rhythm uh, go goes on the the the, the story that um, is inside the test. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> okay, maybe we can move on to the Erica. My microphone, sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the microphone. Yes. Uh, so um, let's uh, uh, introduce uh, 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 a little bit more uh, Takenobu Uchikaraishi and Briarly Long. So uh, um, ta uh, Takenobu Uchikaraishi is a roboticist uh, and uh, is uh, a founder of the uh, Reiwa Kogei company, which is a, a robot company uh, which makes uh, robot uh, in for art, uh, especially with uh, Kogei uh, and with art. Maybe sorry, uh, we will we will explain uh, us better maybe uh, later. And uh, uh, so, as uh, Salvo already said, uh, it was uh, uh, the robot operator in the uh, Sayonara uh, project. And uh, uh, Briar, Briar, Briarly Long is um, um, an actress. And uh, uh, since 2010, uh, she, wa she, was, uh, uh, she has been a member of a Senei Dan theater company. 
And so she has an extensive experience uh, in the work of uh, Irata. Uh, so uh, uh, we have the child here with us uh, today. And uh, the first question that I, I would like to, to ask you, if, uh, if, if you can tell us something about how you joined the Human Theatre Project uh, and uh, uh, from uh, what uh, background and which was your uh, first reaction to the idea of working in such a, an indisciplinary context uh, with the robots uh, and with the theatre uh, creation? Uh, I don't know, Briarly, maybe? Uh, yeah, sure. So I joined the San Andan Theater Company straight after university. And um, when I was on my way to Japan, actually, Hirata Oriza messaged me that they were going to be doing a project with robots. Would I be interested in taking part? And I was, I didn't have in mind an image of an Android robot. So um, when I first like started seeing what Android robots looked like, I was a little bit terrified. Um, but um, I did, so it was the first professional theater project I did actually in my career, um, having, you know, done more like, you know, growing up as an amateur or, you know, as a student, but um, as a working actress in Japan. And um, I think we were all like quite surprised by how much attention this play received because um, we premiered at the Aichi Arts Triennale and there was a ton of press because everyone around the world was sort of very fascinated by the first sort of robot human, um, well, Android robot human interaction on stage. Um, and I think it was a really groundbreaking project. Um, and it's interesting to see how, you know, even now in Hollywood films and in plays, I think that, you know, there's lots of imitations of androids, but it's still very rare to actually have a real Android interacting um, with actors and people are still fascinated by the topic. And actually there was interestingly, like the, um, there's a novel that came out recently um, by, uh, what was it, Kazuo Ishiguro about, um, uh, about a, a girl living with a robot. And I was thinking, wow, we actually did that story, you know, more than 10 years ago already. <laughs> So you were terrified by the the at, at no. first by the by the android. Not terrified. No, no, no. I was just uh, before I met the android. I was kind of anticipating what will this be like. But um, no, when I met the android, I wasn't really terrified at all. Okay. And, and what about uh, you, Chikaraishi? You you come from a different uh, background. How how do you came in in this project? Uh, I was working uh, uh, as a researcher, robotics uh, in Ishiguro's lab. So, uh, but uh, I met Oriza. Oriza uh, asked me to play uh, theater in uh, a robot in theater. So, I changed my profession. So, I'm not a, a scientist now, <laughs> uh, but uh, in this uh, company, uh, in this country, uh, there's no uh, art, art robot. Mm, so, uh, how can I say? People are making with uh, just only technology. So, uh, we, I don't like uh, uh, their robots. I love uh, uh, robot with uh, something. Uh, dreaming and the future and uh, something imaginary thing. So I made a, a company for artistic robot. So now I'm uh, making new robot in company, my company. But then you were uh, uh, mm. a, a, a young researcher in, in robotics. Mm. Yes, uh, yes, I'm working. Yes, I'm working with uh, researchers, but my main target is uh, uh, making a new robot. Mm -hmm. 
Salvo? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, um, mm. because we, we, we presented you as, uh, we introduced you as uh, uh, the robot uh, operator uh, the, in, uh, of the Gemini Death. You know, Gemini Death mm. was teleoperated. Uh, this mm. means that you were like uh, um, the master of the puppets uh, in some uh, mm -hmm. uh, behind the curtain. No? Uh, so maybe uh, people don't know exactly what, uh, what you did. Uh, could you explain more your role? Uh, uh, yes. what, what you did actually? Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, yes, I'm an uh, operator in, in theater playing. I'm operate robots, a lot of uh, thing, uh, things uh, on the stage. But before playing uh, theater, I will uh, make a lot of program and motions with bravery uh, uh, for uh, this theater, uh, Sayonara. Uh, I took a uh, video, video camera, uh, uh, Briar is acting, and uh, analyzing a, a video image uh, to, to generate Android's motion. So we uh, storage, uh, I storage uh, uh, data of uh, Android's motion, uh, I play uh, on stage uh, with uh, uh, Android's voice. Uh, Android's voice was recorded uh, uh, by uh, another actress uh, with uh, Hirata's scenario. Is, is that okay? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, it, it's, it's interesting mm -hmm. because actually mm -hmm. it is something that uh, uh, I was wondering to understand better. Uh, I mean, so the robot was just follow, was following a predefined script, isn't it? Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, or, or, but does it have some kind of um, um, autonomy, assistance for managing the synchronization between the robot and the mm -hmm. actor? Uh, or you were just, uh, can I say, synchronized, synchronizing uh, by yourself during the during the, the theater, and also, uh, and you know that uh, for the, I mean, I would like to know more about how you programmed the the robot because this is I think it's important, and um, in particular how you integrated the control of the robot with the the the, the contemporary colloquial theater theory from uh, from uh, from Mirada. I see, yes. Uh, Hirata uh, is a director with, uh, how can I say, uh, very clear directing. So, usual director uh, direct uh, to the actors, uh, play more uh, fa face, uh, uh, angry face or smiling face. But Hirata is not, uh, is not like that. Hirata, uh, director just uh, uh, look at this direction uh, uh, to stand up in this position and speak uh, more uh, 0, 0 0.5 second later. So his director direction is a very, uh, uh, how you can say, numerical. So I can uh, easily make robots motion and behaviors uh, with robots as an engineer. <laughs> okay, okay. I think, can, uh, I, can, he, I ask, I, uh, can I ask a question? Uh, yes, um, sure, sure, sure. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in uh, uh, to know a little bit more uh, what was happening uh, uh, when uh, when you prepared? Uh, you were preparing the, the the piece. I mean, either recording, uh, I mean, making the movie or or, or preparing uh, the the show. You know, uh, because uh, being a roboticist, I, I know that uh, uh, sometimes you know people think that uh, 
the robot is uh, capable of doing more than what the robot uh, can actually do. Uh, so I wonder uh, how much uh, uh the 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 plot uh, or or the recording you know depended uh, on uh, the limited abilities of of the robot you know how much did uh, did you have to change uh, uh the plot uh, of the of the of the of the show uh because uh of the limitations of the robot uh, I, I don't know if i explained myself what, what i'm interested in is uh, uh, how much uh, uh, the fact that you were uh, working with a robot uh, changed uh, the original, you know, idea of of uh, of the of the play? Ah yes. Uh, basically, I do not uh, change uh, director's uh, saying, <laughs> but but uh, his direction is uh, how can I say just framework. Okay. I feel feel a uh, lot of things. His framework, for example, uh, yes, how can I say, uh, blinking and uh, moving and direction. Yes, uh, but it is. Mm. These are these are more. I mean, uh, mm. uh, these are more. Let's say engineering explanations. You know, which I understand uh, and and. Mm. Uh, I, you know, because I mean, working with robots, we, we do have to, to do these kind of things and, you know, try to translate uh, movements that we have in our mind into programs. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm more interested in what uh, uh, Briarly uh, uh, thinks about this. I mean, because she was, uh, she was acting with a robot. So I'm, I'm sure that she had uh, an idea of what a robot could do when, when she started uh, the adventure. And you know, I'm interested uh, more in understanding how much uh, the vision has changed, uh, and how much uh, 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 what is the, the 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 difference in terms of social relationship, you know, between uh, a human actor and a humanoid actor or a robotic actor. Um, so, in response to your question, the we didn't change the play to adapt to the robot because. The play was written specifically for the robot. Okay. So um, it, this play was written with the concept of, you know, two characters sitting on stage and talking. And it was specifically an experiment in having a robot recite poetry. So they came up with this um, situation of a dying person who is getting consolation. Yeah. Um, and so, well, both of both the robot and I were quite still um, and yeah. just talking and sitting in our chairs. And then, um, so yeah, the story of the play did not change the way, you know, the way I acted was directed by Oriza and determined by the timing and it was very staged. Um, so it's not the kind of situation where we improvise and change these things as we go much. Um, I think when, when some things that did change were um, in the very beginning, we had an actress backstage with um, Chikaraishi um, who was um, in real time doing the voice of the robot. Um, and then we had a few glitches and we decided it would be easier to pre-record it. Okay. So then for a long time, because this was a short play, we had actually all of the timing was preset. So um, the robot was talking and I had to fit this the time for that. But then by the time we did the film and then also when Chikaraishi worked on Android uh, version three sisters and metamorphosis, then there was much more within the, you know, within the play that I guess cues were, so it, I think it was relying more on Chikaraishi's adaptability um, to, to fit the, with the actors as well, um, versus in the begin in the very beginning, maybe it was much more the actors who are fitting the robot and making it seem like it's uh, spontaneous. So um, I think that was the biggest challenge with this play. Was um, on the one hand, I think that the they wanted to do an experiment and the sort of finding a blurring the line between human and robot. So um, when we premiered the play, some people were saying, so 
who is the robot? Is it the blonde girl speaking Japanese or is it the, um, you know, Asian looking girl on stage? And, um, and then, th th but that was very intentional. So my movements are very controlled too. But then, um, you know, as we progressed and when I did the film, I found, I found for me the challenge was within the context of very precise timing, mm -hmm. um, like kind of almost robotic direction, how to stay, how to have some kind of natural emotion okay. in that. Okay, I mean, this is, I think this is very interesting because you see, you know, on one side, you see the, the movement of the robots were very nicely uh, programmed, uh, uh, taking into consideration that the robot couldn't move very fast uh, and, and all, you know, but, but the, the messages were, were really, uh, for, from 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 the spectator point of view, uh, the the sign of of communication of the robot were very nice. You know, the blinking, uh, the slow movement of, of of the hands and so on and so forth. So, it looked like uh, 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 you know the let's say the human actor was uh, in fact uh, uh, um, uh, acting uh, uh, in reading by reading these messages. You know. Um, uh, in, in reality, as if it was a, a, a human uh, actor, you know, where you synchronize your movements. Uh, uh, while uh, what you say now, uh, this uh, uh, apparent natu naturality of, of the interaction uh, was very much staged and timed uh, by, by uh, you know, by the, by the plot, let's say, by, by the robot. So, uh, you you were not uh, uh, in in a broad sense you you were not interacting with the robot but you are synchronizing your actions uh, with the robot. I don't want to define what it means to interact with the robot, so I'll leave that to them. No, in, I mean uh, by, in, by by interaction, I mean you know when you exchange messages. You know when when I'm sure that when you act with a human. Uh, you, with a human colleague, uh, uh, you, you synchronize naturally by looking at what the, the person is doing. So the timing is not always perfect of your sentences and your, and your movements. While in this case, you had to be very precise in timing uh, uh, your movement and your words. Yeah, but that's actually the way that Hirata works with actors for all projects, including okay. with between human actors. We are also we. He also wants us to respect the precise time. Oh, okay. So that's the particularity of Hirata Wardiza's theater. It's uh, and Brielle, can you tell us something more about uh, uh, this uh, directing style about uh, Irata? Can you? Chikadaishi talked about a, a, a numerical kind of direction of the actors. Can you tell us something more? From your uh, in the actress point of view. No, I think uh, Chikaraishi um, explained it perfectly. It's uh, very numerical. So um, it's, I enjoyed working in that way because sometimes I think that um, actions precede emotion. So um, when you try something out, then it translates into emotion and um, I, I've noticed a big difference between sort of actors I worked with in Japan and then actors in Europe um, or the United States. They tend to, a, a lot of European actors will say like, so what, why should I do this? I need to understand the feeling and Japanese actors that I worked with, they tend to take the direction and, um, and, and try and respect the direction without sort of creating a reason first. And I found that when I, take the direction um, exactly as the director has given to it to me, then sometimes I find a reason afterwards in the action. So I think it relates to how you define emotion as well. Like is emotion something you have to sort of preconceive or plan in your intellectual cognitive mind or is it something that results from our actions? And uh, Isabella, the, the, you wanted to ask a question. The voice. You are muted. The, the, the micro. micro. <laughs> 
Um, I have a question for Brerly. Once I read an interview with you, and uh, you said in this interview that playing with a robot is like a playing with a children. Um, I don't know if you remember your sentence, but could you could you tell us a little about this sensation? I don't remember the. Do you have any more specific context? Sorry. Um, um, I don't remember the, the title of this interview, but uh, the question was uh, about the, uh, the improvisation, uh, which was quite limited in this, in this approach. Um, hmm. Playing with children. I wouldn't say that now, if you ask me now. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe because children don't obey, you know, <laughs> when you tell them to do something. So does the robot, maybe that's the an analogy, possible analogy. But Maybe because children don't overthink things, they just do instead yeah. of, maybe that's, you know. Yeah. But maybe you, 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 you developed uh, your, your approach also. So you can you can't say this now. So it's understand. Um, no, no, I do I do think it's possibly to do with the um, you know a lot of adults tend to intellectualize things and think before we act, right? Um, and we lose that spontaneity that um, and and then you know adult actors like that's one of the jobs of an of an actor or an artist is to sort of find that spontaneity again. Um, and so, I mean, there's a whole process we, as actors go through where we, you know, we start out sort of very like children enjoy like very fun and natural. And then people start to like overthink things. And then you, the ideal is to again, achieve that naturalness. Like once you've learned the techniques to go beyond that. So I think that maybe robots, um, they have the quality of not overthinking what they're doing. So that's kind of like the child play, right? Which is mm -hmm. an, an objective that we try to achieve in art generally, I think is that natural creativity that children have, but then with technique underlying it and te yeah, technology. Okay. Mm -hmm. And can we can can we go back to the um, creative process? And uh, we were quite curious about the rehearsals. Uh, how uh, were um, how, how were they organized? And uh, how um, I mean because. Uh, all the project is uh, is based on the idea that uh, theater is a kind of a laboratory where we can uh, uh, explore and test the the, uh, the 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 limits and the possibility of uh, uh, expression and interaction, simulated interaction with with Android. I, I would say so. I, I would like to come back to the creative portion to to the rehearsals. How they how are they were uh, organized and uh, how the collaboration could be fluid uh, between these two different universes. We talk about, about uh, the method, the, the directing method of Irata, which is uh, uh, really significant in uh, this way, in this aspect. But what about the material organization of the rehearsals? How long they, did they take? Uh, uh, did, did you work all together? Did you have separate sessions? I don't know, something about that. I don't know uh, who, who wants to, to answer. Uh, 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 could you uh, explain more easily, please? <laughs> uh, just uh, uh, sorry, my English is not mm. good. We are a bit lost in the international English, uh, mm. I think. But how the rehearsals were organized? Uh, how long uh, did you take to mount the pieces? Uh, how did you work uh, separately? Uh, to, to the robot uh, with, with, the, with the director, with the engineers. Uh, how, how did you work together? 
just a very factual uh, question. Question. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, make it. Uh, in this uh, in Sayonara, uh, we uh, we made uh, about one month or two months uh, days uh, to make uh, this theater piece. Uh, first, uh, we did not use robot, just only human actors and uh, human uh, factors. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, Andrew is playing and the voice was uh, played by a real human actress. So she did not uh, uh, appear in stage. So she, she contributed just, uh, uh, how can I say, motions and voice. Uh, so just started uh, uh, making a creation of theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, we spend a one week or two weeks uh, to analyze um, uh, uh, actress motions, and, and uh, we I made us um, about five or ten, uh, ten pieces of a theater play. So just uh, real, real staging, I. Uh, play uh, with Q, uh, Briar's uh, world. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, we play uh, uh, all, all uh, time. Briar, mm. do you want to, uh, to add something about the staging process? that the rehearsals? Um, I mean, it's interesting because the, I think Chikaishi is probably the person who worked the longest hours on this because, um, you know, uh, the director came and told us, you know, you should uh, do this and that. And then we, you know, we would repeat the movements. And then based on that, he obviously had to develop the program. So um, I'm sure he was working behind the scenes like even more than we the actors or the director was. Um, yeah, so that's why I thought he should take the question. <laughs> um, so Bradley, I'm curious about the technical problems. Uh, there was during the performance uh, and um, did they interfere negatively with the creation or did they represent a creative contrast? I know, I mean, the only technical problems we had is like in certain theaters, there was some issue with the communication between stage and I think that um, we lost connection or whatever between the operating booth and the robot, um, like when we were trying to do it in real time with an actress backstage, um, it was difficult sometimes with the lag. I, um, and so, Maybe Chikara, she can explain to you the more technical part of that. But basically, there there was a couple times where the robot stopped moving on stage, um, okay. which was kind of terrifying because we're not a theater company where we're expected to improvise, so or we're not meant to improvise. So I just waited for the robot to like wake up again, and it was, I'm sure it was more terrifying for Chikara, she getting the connection going again. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do yes. you want to uh, mm, uh, yes, robot has a lot of uh, problem. Uh, in our usual days, robot can uh, act like a, a human, but I don't know why, just on this stage, uh, robot is uh, often stops. <laughs> so I think the reason is, uh, into communication problem. Uh, communication is a uh, uh, no, no, no uh, signal problem. Uh, for uh, for uh, my 
controlling uh, computer with to a uh, robot is connected uh, with a wire. So wire is, often wire is uh, interfered with a, a, a microwave or something. So robots uh, motion was uh, 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 malfunctioning with uh, something noise. So often robots stop to talk. Uh, so Brian is, uh, is uh, how can I say, uh, to, uh, ca cannot play with uh, robots. So <laughs> I try to reboot my computer again. <laughs> So rebooting, uh, this is something with the robot you can do, you cannot do with actors. But <laughs> I have, a, if I if I can, I have a question for, um, uh, yeah, for, for you. Um, in, uh, if I understood well, all these, um, uh, I've seen part of, I mean, a, a small part of a, of a, of a stage uh, a few years ago in Palermo. I know there was a, a in a very famous theater in Palermo. There was a show by 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 the robot, which was uh, really astonishing uh, in the sense that I was uh, with with uh, with a friend of mine who was not a roboticist, uh, and uh, when I told him that uh, the robot, uh, uh, you know, halfway through the 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 the, the, the play, I told him that uh, there was a robot on stage. He didn't believe me. <laughs> So it was uh, so nicely staged that uh, even the movements, uh, which were not uh, very fast, but uh, uh, the interaction was uh, really very, very natural. And I wonder, uh, so if, uh, um, if, you, if the robot has some kind, uh, even a, a small uh, kind of autonomy somehow, you know, like uh, now uh, you, you could uh, relatively easy have robots which can track your face, for example, you know, which is uh, something that will, uh, can allow the actor to move a little bit more, you know, in front of the robot. Uh, so I wonder if, you know, in, in these plays, uh, the robot was, uh, uh, totally pre-programmed uh, or there was some kind of uh, autonomy, you know, even small autonomy or not? Uh, it's not uh, autonomy. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm. So I uh, uh, Yes. Uh, robot's motion is pre-programmed okay. uh, by uh, 10 parts, just 10 parts. Yes. Okay. So mm, I pray... Uh, uh, she can shall play okay. with uh, actors' uh, uh, words. Okay, okay. So, yeah, but, um, yeah. No, please, please do that. No, in, in, in some sense, uh, the, the, uh, I mean, the, the, the big difference between uh, a, a play like this, uh, you know, and, uh, and cartooning, you know, uh, is uh, if you see it uh, uh, really on stage. I mean, if you see a, 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 the, 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 pic, the, the, the movie of, uh, of something like that, uh, intrinsically, it looks like uh, the movement being the movement of the robot being pre-programmed. Uh, it looks like uh, uh, a real person, uh, uh, you know, acting with a cartoon. Mm. No, I mean, um, uh, sorry, maybe I, I, I'm certainly I'm not making uh, myself uh, understood I think, here. I think what you're saying is that um, we expect theater to be spontaneous in yes. comparison to film, where it's always like pre determined, you know, yes. it's been pre timed. Um, yeah. Well, I guess there's different degrees of spontaneity and yeah, yeah. theater, but we'll have to do another. We'll have to do another play now that um, the robots have much more autonomy. Yeah, to but, yes. with the new project. Yes, yes. No, you know, it's it's uh, in, in some sense, you know, it's it's like. Uh, uh, it's like a concert where everybody follows, you know, the the uh, this partito, the the the, the notes. Uh, but then, if, if you look at, for example, um, 
orchestras or yeah. ballet, which are also a form of theater, um, yeah. the timing is very precise in those yes, things exactly. as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's not big variation in, in, in like with spontaneity. So I think that maybe it's people's expectation or image um, more than the reality. I think that theater is also very, you know, orchestrated, right? Yes, yes. So even even if the robot is is not autonomous, uh, uh, that is the uh, the possibility of uh, um, uh, you know th there is also a qualitative uh, uh, parameter which is important you know which which is which, I mean a, 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 a specific uh, a specific play in a specific day may be better than the same play the next day I mean I'm trying uh, I mean yes this is spontaneity. Thing that you are talking about. So the, if, even if concerts are all, let's say, predetermined, uh, you can appreciate uh, uh, if it is played uh, in, uh, well or not. I'm, I'm just thinking aloud, sorry, was not <laughs> what the question. I, I, I have just uh, another question. Ah, maybe, oh, oh, no, oh. no, go, 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 Savo, go, please, and then Marion. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Just just to finish this thing because it's interesting to see that there was a uh, sayonara between humans, and this is something interesting because I didn't know about that. You said that uh, Shkreish, you said that uh, you made uh, a video, and then you a video of uh, people acting, and then you translated these into movements. But uh, how you did this process was completely manual. Was uh, did you did you do, did maybe we use use the motion capture uh, yes. some kind? Mm. Ah, uh, could you could you explain this part because I was ah yeah. yes ah uh, yeah uh, uh, a human actress playing a video uh, analyzed by a, a program uh, just uh, like a, a motion capture and especially uh, sayonara in sayonara. Uh, Android ro robot uh, moves, uh, especially face. So uh, we use a face tracking uh, program. So face tracking program means the three has a three di uh, direction X Y Z. So uh, uh, translated that Android's uh, desired value. So Android. Uh, imitate human actress motion. Okay. Mm. Okay. Facial, facial, facial yes. movements. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Marion, yeah. sorry, do you want to please? Thank you. It, it was about spontaneity again, because last Last week, we spoke about uh, Contelligent from Joël Pomra, and we spoke about um, robot likeness, because actress are playing robots in, in this performance. Um, I was wondering uh, how the robots uh, can modify the acting. Uh, I mean, through your acting, um, Brierly, you said you, you feed the robot and you make it appear human and spontaneous. Uh, Ishiguro robots are very similar to humans, um, but I. I have the impression that the rhythm of your acting help, helps to make it more similar and, and more human. So we can say the, the actress is making the robot human. And I was wondering if on the contrary, can we say that the robot modifies the actor's performance? Does the robot um, make the actor less spontaneous? Can we say that? It was my well, first question, and I have a second question. Um, do you have to play with the in, uh, unpredictability of the robot? Uh, for example, in, in case of a technical problem, you have to improvise. Um, how, how can you do it? Do this. Thank you. Sorry for my English. <laughs> I hope you understood. So um, I think, like, if you have if I say, how are you? And then there's a little bit of a time lag and then you say, fine, thank you. Then it's gonna seem like a very robotic performance, right? Um, so human interactions, like 
we, as I did to you, we interrupt each other or, you know, we, and so that's the, um, the timing actually when what the director did is analyze what is the natural timing and we would that's what we do in the rehearsal process okay so if i respond at this pace then it's going to seem unnatural so i think that's maybe also where the theater helps to inform the robotics as well okay what is a natural human pace that appears spontaneous you know like maybe speaking right at the end of someone else's words or um, but not always at the same rhythm between each person's, um, you, it, it's not, it's the element of spontaneity too is it's not gonna be the same from sentence to sentence, right? Sometimes we're gonna leave pauses, sometimes to think, or, you know, sometimes we won't leave pauses. So, um, you know, if, if, like maybe a very amateur actor will always be speaking in the same rhythm. And then we'll think, huh, that looks very staged. Like they're not, really feeling those emotions, right? So um, we had to develop that, like the timing, that was the thing that we had to figure out. How does the timing work perfectly for it to seem like it's a natural interaction? And um, and then as I was saying earlier, I think that for me, what, what was the challenge as an actor in this process is while well, being incredibly precise with my timing, how do I, keep some kind of like spontaneous emote, you know, since I've pre-planned everything, how do I make it still the emotion appear in a more spontaneous organic way, like in that moment, rather than just acting like I've pre-programmed myself. Bradley, and, uh, just to, con uh, sorry, just have yeah. you ever felt con 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 Constrained, constrained with this. I think it's you know constraints always create more creativity, right? So it's interesting when you're uh, when you're doing that, like okay, how do I sort of remain with within these constraints, but like kind of break out of the box still, right? And um, in in the show, the, there is a moment that for me is very. Uh, uh, troubling, I don't know what to say, but it's very uh, strange and uh, emotional. It's, uh, it's the moment when uh, at the, the end of the, of the play, uh, the technician uh, just uh, take uh, up the, the robot and uh, take it away. And uh, and during the, the, the play, we, we are uh, uh, we are uh, have a, a kind of empathy with this robot who uh, is after we can imagine the death of the girl is let alone and it seems to and then we are at this moment when the technician just take it and up, uh, charge it and uh, go uh, take it away. We are um, uh, taken back to the reality of the objectuality of this uh, robot. It's just an object, it's, just, it's not a, a, a real person. And it's a very, for me as a, as a spectator, it's a very strange and uh, uh, a profound, uh, deep moment, um, I think. So, uh, uh, because uh, we, we, we are, as uh, Giulio Sandini was saying uh, before, we are uh, confused about uh, the, the nature of this uh, being uh, of, uh, on, on, on stage. And I was uh, uh, curious, really, uh, rightly, about uh, your relation with the Robert as a as a, an object, but also as a partner, was a, uh, was a, this uh, a body uh, which has a this figure which which has a body, but which is also dissociated because of the voice uh, uh, came uh, from uh, from an actress, uh, the the mimics as well. Uh, was a real partner for you, or was just uh, uh, yes. Uh, 
it's, it's for do you feel like a, a, a real member of the team of the creative team i don't know how to explain but was the affective also relationship with the the robot if well, the, of, there was one first of all what you were talking about earlier about the robot being picked up that was actually so there was the first part of Sayonara where it was just me and the robot on stage and then it goes fades to black before the robot gets picked up. And then there's a second part, Sayonara 2, where the, um, the technician comes and picks up the robot. And that was actually written um, after Fukushima happened. So um, for a project, originally it was written for a project with human actors, no robot in New York about um, theaters to do with um, the Shinsai, so the natural disaster that happened on um, 3-11-2011, um, um, the you know, great Eastern Japan earthquake. So it was very much a reflection of, of that event in history. And then we added that to the robot theater. So the first part of the robot theater didn't have that. So I think that when that was added, it was the director reflecting on maybe, I don't know, maybe it's about mortality of, of humans as well as, as machines because we were experiencing this situation of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Um, yeah, and, um, and also a lot of human death. So, um, but um, in terms of, did I feel like uh, the robot is a living being that I, inter that I have some kind of connection with? Um, in all honesty, no. I mean, for me, the connection is with the actor who's programming it, with Chikaraishi, with you know, the people who are like the team that's bringing it to life. Um, and then it's imagination, but I mean, it's like, you know, when when actors act in in movies, like sometimes, you know, when there's a lot of like special effects or whatever, you might be acting to like a tennis ball, right? And you're imagining. So, um, I mean, it's a much nicer, um, like a partner to act with than a tennis ball, right? It's, it looks like a human, but um, for me, it's, it's still an object, you know, it's not, I think the human for me is, are the people who are operating this object. Yeah. Okay. This is interesting because it's, it's, it's like the difference between uh, Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones. <laughs> One project to Indiana Jones, but actually, actually it's Harrison Ford. In some way, that one is a robot. It's like a washing machine that people perceive it like a member of the, like a real actor. Yes, it's, it's more the, the, the audience that, uh project some uh, uh, living uh, emotions uh, and uh, real intention on the object uh, because of all the work that is uh, done. Yes. Well, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I have a question for uh, Briarly. Uh, so um, when I start uh, to work on my research for this project, uh, one of my points of uh, reference was Buraku Theater, uh, the Japanese puppet theater, and, uh, and in particular the fundamental role played by Chikamatsu Monzaemon, uh, the most important uh, Japanese playwright of the Edo period. And um, he devoted himself to writing just for puppets. So in your opinion, how important is the dramaturgy in a show with no human actor, live, uh, like robot uh, theater is, uh, to engage the, the audience. It's interesting that you mentioned uh, Chikamatsu Monzaimon because I think he wrote a lot of like love suicides, right? Um, so uh, when he was writing for puppets, he's actually writing about life and death. And, um, and in you know, Japanese literature, there's always um, a theme of um, how ephemeral human life is. Um, it's one of the common themes. So it's interesting that both in the Bunnaku and then in this Sayonara, um, it, 
it becomes an occasion through an object to think about like what death is, right? For humans. Yeah. And Professor uh, Sandini, um, did you want to, to add something? Please. Yes. No. I mean, I'm, 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 I think I think this you know this this discussion is very nice because it's uh, it's you know on one side the person who actually acted with a robot and on the other side the programmer who actually played with the robot you know programmed the robot to move so uh, it's uh, it's a. Uh, it's, a, it's an important occasion, I think. So I, I wonder, I mean, uh, I have a question for both somehow, you know. Uh, for for Briarly, uh, I mean, after uh, this experience with the robot, uh, uh, have you learned something new as, as an actor? I mean, as, as, a, as an actor with humans, let's say, not, not necessarily, you know, the ability to act uh, with a robot, which of course uh, uh, you, you, you certainly have, but uh, did, you, did you feel you, you, you got something more as, as an actor from this experience, you know, for example, by seeing that the, the robot uh, uh, movement uh, miss something which you find in natural uh, actors, you know. So I, I wonder about, this is the question for Briary. For, for, um, uh, for uh, Chirakashi, I mean, it's the same. I mean, uh, as a programmer of robot, uh, uh, you know, designed to interact with humans, you know. After this experience, uh, uh, do you think you can design uh, better robots, uh, better interactive robots, or, or and in which case, why? You know? So, it's a, so maybe Briary can, yeah. Are you, are you a better actor now that you have had this experience with the robot? Um, I mean, I think people have a lot of preconceptions about robots, so. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot um, and I think a lot of artists also maybe have a stereotype of like what a robot is. So it was really fascinating to actually work with um, specialists in this field and to challenge my own like, you know, maybe preconception. And um, yeah, I wish that that were reflected more in Hollywood movies and uh, TV shows, I feel like often like sci-fi isn't even um, as advanced as the actual science that's happening right now. So um, that's very exciting. And um, yeah, in terms of acting, I mean, I think that um, I, I found it, I, I kind of found it fast. Maybe I went through a process of, you know, in the beginning, like wanting to be spontaneous and then opening up to just taking direction and, I, I, I always find it fascinating when actors are very resistant to taking direction and, you know, they don't want to try something or, you know, they don't, they're not willing to follow the precise timing. I think that it's, um, yeah, I, I guess maybe I've become very technical. Like I like to, you know, be, be as um, precise and, you know, really follow like almost robotic directions because it, there's many situations in acting where that's helpful. Like, you know, for, for example, when you're working on camera too, there's a lot of, there's a whole technical team that's, that's uh, filming your acting, right? So the lighting and the sound and, you know, the camera, like if you suddenly do something that wasn't planned, then that can sort of throw everybody off course. Um, but it's within doing something planned, making it seem natural, I think is like something that sometimes actors struggle with. So that was maybe a good training is spending a lot of time doing something very planned and trying to make it spontaneous still. Um, yeah, so that was a good experience. Thanks. And what about uh, you, Chikadaish, about uh, the, uh, the, 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 what, uh, uh, did you learn about uh, this experience? Th this was our last question. You you yeah. stole us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was our ending of the round table. <laughs> but uh, uh, as as uh, we are we are here. Uh, what the, uh, as a uh, professor Sandini asked that now do do you make a, uh, and do you project better robots? Uh, uh, 
having had uh, this experience? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, before working with Briary, I was thinking most important thing is, uh, uh, how can I say, correctness. Uh, uh, analyzing uh, humans, uh, for example, uh, saying, uh, correcting word, uh, co correcting word, uh, his uh, the human's eye direction and correct answer is the most important I, I was thinking. But after uh, working with uh, Briary, I think now I'm thinking it's most important thing is timing. Timing is most important for robots. Yeah, uh, even a robot cannot catch a uh, human's word, but timing is when timing is, is very correct, uh, people can um, uh, satisfy with robot uh, uh, very natural, uh, human think very natural interesting. Mm. Uh, we uh, humans uh, do not uh, 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 do, do not catch the word uh, every, every time uh, correct word. Uh, just like me, uh, I understand uh, what I think, and I want to say uh, just uh, thinking, just thinking. So, uh, timing is not as much uh, people uh, interact, uh, satisfies for interaction. <laughs> uh, that is my uh, okay. uh, thinking. And I, and I think that time is uh, is uh, crucial also in in theater. I mean, uh, in theater, we 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 are searching for the presence, and the presence is uh, to be present uh, on stage with uh, the partners and also with uh, with the audience. And it's uh, nothing, uh, and and there is something that it's not. Uh, uh, spontaneous and that there is not a natural is a very constructed uh, time the, the the theatrical time so i mean the, there is a very strong uh, connection between the the two fields uh, on this i think and salvo please uh, uh, yes no no i was uh, this 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 thing of timing actually it's yeah. uh, i don't think it's really important uh, uh, so I have another question about uh, because um, about the staging of Sayonara because uh, uh, basically you travel about the world or maybe all the world uh, staging Sayonara, uh, proposing it to different publics, different cultures. So I would like to uh, know something more about the, the the reception of such different audiences. Uh, the, uh, could you tell us something about it? How the, the the show was preceded. I, mean, I think that um, when we first premiered, you know, in foreign media, um, there was like the initial reaction was, "Oh my God, they're doing something crazy in Japan again." Um, versus in Japan, there was much more openness to just accepting what was happening on stage and accepting the presence of a robot on stage. So I think that maybe in as like Hirata Oriza and um, Professor Shigeru explained to me, and maybe it's got something to do with like Christianity, like in a lot of Judeo-Christian societies, we um, people have some kind of resistance to, because they place, you know, human as being like something very superior to objects, right? So having an object on stage with a human, like is there's some kind of, yeah, there, there's still some, Kind of resistance to um, to that, um, and it's interesting too. Like you know, even now when you look at a lot of films and TV shows, like it's, it seems like in Western cultures we often get stuck in this sort of like Frankenstein, like you know, oh no, robots are going to take over the world or something. Like it's, I think it's very limiting. So um, hopefully, like you know, there will be more and more acceptance. Um, in mainstream culture um, of, because it's interesting how, you know, robots have become such a part of our lives anyway. And then I think that they influence all humans actions, like, you know, the way that we're all addicted to our phones, right? And we're kind of like, um, I think it dictates how we behave too. So um, I think that if people 
accepted that they're letting themselves be formatted on a daily basis too, then maybe um, they wouldn't think it's so strange to see a robot and a human on stage together. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, as a, as an actor, did did you feel different a different energy in uh, in Japan in Europe coming from uh, from the audience, or? Um, I mean, I think that it, for the most part, it was the same. I mean, there's there's a, there were a couple. In, I mean, I think the Japanese audiences responded very well. For the most part, the European audiences responded very well. But I do remember, like, there were a couple critiques that we got where it was like, well, the, you know, it, it's very kind of robotic, or it's very like this doesn't seem very natural, or it's I don't like I don't, there, that was where um, I felt like there maybe there was some resistance to um, accepting the idea of a robot acting um, in outside of Japan. But for the most part, I think people are really fascinated by it, but also maybe because people are so fascinated by it, like they have to, you know, when things change, people are always like not accepting it right away. So they're like, this isn't really theater, right? This is like a science mm -hmm. experiment. Like they have to put something into a box, you know, rather than accepting that science and theater can coexist. And uh, uh, thank you. And uh, Chikara Ishii, in uh, in a, in a paper you published, you you you. I mean, it was part of the research to uh, analyze uh, the reactions of the audience in different places, and you published also the results of this uh, uh, this um, this. Uh, this work and um, could you tell tell us something about it? Uh... Oh, yes. Uh, uh, basically, I feel uh, there is no um, um, audience energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but uh, uh, cultural background is very different from Europe and Japan. So. Uh, European people think uh, Japanese people are very robotic. <laughs> so <laughs> we are very polite, uh, eh, polite and uh, boring and motion is uh, not defined uh, in, in um, European <coughs> countries. So uh, European people think our motion is very robotic, uh, I, I think, but um, our uh, for Japanese, European, uh, uh, customs and cultures are so uh, just like uh, robotics. So, uh, I mean, uh, yes, uh, we uh, for for our uh, for me, uh, not customized for uh, uh, our feeling, uh, cultural thing is uh, look like a robotic thing. So, uh so, uh, yeah, robotic thing. So, um, to, so uh, yes. Yeah, my, in my paper, uh, is uh, for familiarity, uh, Japanese familiarity for robot is, uh, 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 is uh, caused by uh, animacy feeling. Animacy is uh, uh, souls are uh, inside everything. So, uh, we, Japanese culture has a mm, the very anima, animacy uh, culture. So, but I think Europeans have the same feeling, I think, uh, for, for French and uh, North European, especially uh, uh, North uh, European, I think Italian too. Animacy is a, a human mm, common feeling. So I think uh, uh, our feeling is uh, several layer. Upper layer is uh, we are familiar uh, uh, everyday thinking. So low layer is uh, basically uh, connected with all human beings. That's my impression. 
And uh, sorry, I, I don't know if you can answer mm. this question, but mm. uh, I am curious. So I, I would, uh, were, was it a, a precise uh, choice, an intentional mm. choice to have a Western uh, mm. actress to play the, um, the girl, the, 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 the partner or the, the robot? Ah, sorry, please say it again. <laughs> uh, if uh, the, there is any in specific intention in the fact mm. of having a Western actress to play mm. the girl, the dying girl, uh, in mm. front of the of the robot, or, or in, in regards of also to this mm. uh, different uh, cultural backgrounds and so on. Mm. I don't know, is Brian, uh, you can answer. I don't. Uh, well, there's actually been versions of the play too with Japanese actresses um, subsequently. Um, I think one of the reasons I was originally cast in this project is because I speak French, German, Japanese, English, and um, because maybe they had already predicted that we would be touring the play quite a lot internationally. So we ended up doing versions of the play in all these different languages. So maybe that was one of the reasons that they cast me. Um, Thank you. But I, I think it's at the end it's quite interesting in, in respect to, to this reaction to the, the, the research of this human, uh, common human reaction to the, the, the presence of the robot on, on stage. Uh, Salvo? Yes, because uh, at the end, the Sayonara becomes also a movie, isn't it? And um, so you had the double experience of working with the Gemini Death in both the media. Uh, could you tell us more about these experiences in terms of similarities, distance, but also challenges? I don't know, because I felt maybe it was easier because you can repeat the same scene and it becomes good. I don't know. I don't know who wants to repeat. What do you think, Harrison? Was it easier doing the movie or the play? Yeah, I think so. No, because you can uh, try and try and try, repeat and repeat until, uh, I don't know. I have no experience. So. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can for I me, I think I could, I could have more spontaneity in the movie because we had more, you know, opportunities to try different variations and but maybe that's also just a difference in directing style because it wasn't directed by the same director so um it was given much more leeway um we broke the robot so maybe it was a stressful experience for the roboticists on the last day of filming i don't know uh, I, can, yes. can I can, can yes. I go back to the uh, animacy issue that uh, Shara Ishi mentioned because I think this is very I think in, in this in this uh, discussion I think it's a very nice uh, uh, it is a very nice uh, uh, concept you know I I, I personally uh, I, I mean I agree with him uh, that uh, uh, you know animacy is perceived the same way. Uh, you know, in Europe and, and in Japan, I don't see uh, a, a, a big a big difference there. Uh, and in fact, I mean, uh, we we in, in both uh, culture we, we have uh, uh, you know uh, puppets going on. I mean, in, uh, on, in Japan, in this Raku, and here we have a different kind of uh, of uh, of uh, artificial agents, let's say, uh, moved by humans. You know, which. Uh, in a sense, is the same with with the robot on stage. Uh, the only thing is that the the human is not uh, is not visible uh, explicitly uh, with when the robot is moving. So I, I think that uh, you know certainly there are different uh, uh, cultural messages that we exchange when we interact. You know, uh, and 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 that you know everybody knows that in Italy we tend to move the hands very much. So there are certainly cultural differences, but these are sort of a superficial. I think. You know, in, in, in the, the in our in our uh, mind, uh, you know, th there is uh, I don't think there is a big difference. Where the difference is, I think, is uh, in, in more in general. You know, the fact that uh, uh, in Europe, at least in Italy, people is very skeptical toward the technology. You know, it's. Uh, 
it sees uh, you know new technologies always from the uh, side of you know bad use of the technology while you know in in japan this is not the case people is uh, very much keen in in trying new things you know and then and, and they see uh, more easily the the good part of the technology than 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 the bad part so i think that this extends to robots of course you know but but uh, um I, I mean, this idea that, uh, you know, Christianity and, uh, I mean, maybe it was true in the medieval time. I don't think it's true anymore with, with the new generation. And, and, uh, and uh, so I think it's more a technological barrier, which the, uh, is different uh, in our culture with respect to, to Japan. Sorry, it was just a comment. Cinta? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and um, okay, I have a, a question for, for both. Um, and I come back to the um, uh, final part of the Sayonara. Uh, when uh, Hirata recalled the event of 2012 uh, in Fukushima, and um, I interpreted this part uh, with a symbolic value. Uh, that maybe uh, aims uh, to a sort of catharsis for uh, Japanese spectators. So, uh, relating those events uh, uh, through the eyes of uh, a robot uh, that uh, is um, typically uh, in the red zone, uh, um, make it possible to find a, a pacification. Mm -hmm for the, man, uh, the many lives lost uh, and uh, for the impossibility to living uh, that place uh, with uh, the usual sp spirituality that uh, belong Japanese culture. So uh, maybe uh, you can speak better about the intention of uh, Hirata in, uh, in this part of the show. Uh, some one of bots who would like. Oui. Malice, can I share or know who wants to respond to the point? Yeah, uh, sorry, I don't want to pronounce myself on behalf of um, Hirata. No. Okay. Okay. Make, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Actually. Yes. That's okay, thank you. And uh, um, uh, as uh, in uh, Los Angeles, it's two and a half in the morning, uh, and uh, Brian would like to go to sleep. I think uh, I don't know if there is a, uh, there are some quick questions uh, to, from the the public, and and then we 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 should uh, conclude, uh, even if uh, I think we are all. I'd like to stay here, here with you more, but uh, I mean, uh, it, it was uh, already a great opportunity. I don't know, uh, there are any more questions from the, the participants? No. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think we, 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 we can uh, conclude. Uh, Salvo, tell me if uh, there is uh, somebody that I didn't see. Okay, so uh, we can. Uh, uh, ah, yes. ah, yeah, there is, yeah. A, there is one. There is, a, there is a question uh, from uh, uh, Boris Abramovich. Please go. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Erika. Thank, uh, I would like to thank the entire team for the interesting uh, and, and, and engaging presentations. My question is more, uh, let's say, technical. Uh, is it because I only joined to this session? Is it uh, possible to find uh, previous sessions uh, with other speakers uh, on YouTube or possibly through a link? Is, is there an option? Uh, yeah, actually, actually, we have a we have a YouTube channel. Uh, oh, okay. I can uh, um, maybe um, if if you I mean if you are um, you should reserve the link 
today with the link of uh, with the zoom together with the zoom link mm -hmm. i added in the same email uh, uh the, the link for the youtube channel but uh, uh if you i can also share in the in the chat here uh but you can just uh, try to find uh, Sene Robotic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, i can share it this this one uh, we already uh, uploaded the, the three uh the, the last three sem uh, the webinar so i i will upload the, the, this one uh, during you. the day thank you so much thank you and so uh, for this uh, season, let's say uh, the webinar is uh, now finished and uh, uh, we, we will, uh, we have the intention to uh, continue this, uh, the, this experience, uh, which was really enriching uh, for, for all of us. And uh, we will have also uh, new, um, appointments uh, at the autumn, no? Uh, Salvatore, yeah, you so. want to say yeah, yeah, something? Yeah. No, just uh, let's stay in touch. I mean, you will receive uh, our uh, email uh, with the events that we will organize, uh, uh, maybe from the next month, we will continue to organize something. We will let you know uh, when we will have something more precise via email. So. Uh, I mean, uh, we have the opportunity to stay in touch and uh, I hope to continue this, uh, uh, this thing that is uh, actually, is for me, from my point of view of engineer and researcher in robotics, I mean, for me, it's something that is very, very interesting. And I think this four, uh, this four uh, webinars, this first four webinars really highlighted the strict connection between these two words that actually, they seem to be far, but actually they, share many things that are more in common than what we, we can think uh, usually. And uh, just before we go, thanks again uh, to our uh, speakers uh, from yeah. uh, United States, from Japan, from Italy. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot to have uh, uh, accepted to, to stay with us uh, today and to share your, your experience. Thanks uh, a lot. Thanks. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Yeah.